In this video, I'm going to talk about the most outrageous, the most controversial, the most potentially offensive moving part of my baby bomb package, the concept of dilution. And the premise of dilution is that the people who are least equipped to be parents are the people who have the most children, while the people you really want to be parents are having fewer children. And this is true no matter how you measure uh, the, the quality of these parents. For example, the people with the most education have the fewest children, while the people with less education have a lot of children. So over time, this has to have some sort of effect on the human population. And in fact, this is the premise of a 2006 movie called Idiocracy. As the 21st century began, human evolution was at a turning point. Evolution does not necessarily reward intelligence. With no natural predators to thin the herd, it began to simply reward those who reproduced the most and left the intelligent to become an endangered species. So the premise of idiocracy is that the stupid people are breeding faster than the smart people are. Uh, the smart people, the people with high IQs, they, they hold off on having children and they have only one or two, while the stupid people with low IQs just breed like bunnies. And over a thousand years, the, uh, that means the human genome has changed and there are only stupid people in the world. So a guy who is frozen today, a guy of average intelligence who is frozen today, he wakes up a thousand years from now and he's the smartest man in the world. So there's a lot of ways that that's uh, wrong, that I don't think it's, it's actually happening quite that way. The implication of uh, idiocracy is that the human genome is changing. In other words, there's a de-evolution, there's a reverse evolution from the higher form that we're in today to a much lower form a thousand years from now. And, and I don't think that's correct. I don't think the evolution model is quite correct because the smart people are still breeding today. They're just not having as many children as certain other people are having. It's like if only the people with red hair had children, had a lot of children. If the people with red hair had a lot of children and the, the parents with dark hair or blonde had, hair only had a few children, then over time you'd like, you're going to see more red-headed people in society. That doesn't mean that the other hair colors are dying out. It only means that there's more redheads. Uh, you're, you're only going to have a change in the genome, in other words, actual evolution, if there's, if there's some process that comes along and kills all those other people with different hair colors. And I don't see that happening. I just see a, a change in the mix of population. Uh, it, and the whole notion that it, this is smart people versus stupid people has its problems as well. Because there's really, there, there's a lot of evidence that that going into this process, it's true. Uh, people with higher education have fewer children. People with higher test scores on intelligent te tests have fewer children. Uh, people with higher incomes have fewer children. So it, it seems to be clear that going into this process, it's true that the least equipped parents are having more children. However, there is no empirical evidence that society is getting dumber. In fact, the opposite is true. In the uh, 100 years, the 80 or 100 years that we've been conducting standardized testing, people have been getting smarter year after year. This is something called the Flynn Effect, named after Professor James Flynn, a political scientist who first identified it. Since the, the start of testing in, in the 1920s, uh, whatever standardized test you come up with, people are getting better and better at it every year. So people are actually getting smarter over the past century, which is a big mystery to a lot of people, a lot of scientists, because why should this be true? And if, if you look around you at, at the people you meet in the street, does it really strike you that people are getting smarter? Uh, so what is this Flynn effect? And 
does it kind of counteract my, uh, my notion of dilution? And I don't know what the, the solution for the Flynn effect is, uh, but it, it's clear that, that your parents have some sort of effect on, on who you are. Uh, let's not frame it in terms of, of smart and stupid, let's frame it in terms of values. And the number one place that you get your values is your parents and the environment in which you grew up. And we don't need to even decide whether it's nature or nurture, whether it's genes or upbringing. The fact is, is that the place where you grow up, grew up, the people you came from and the place you grew up has an enormous influence over you and it changes your values. It, it, it creates your values. So if you have certain groups of people in society that are, are, are multiplying at greater numbers, then those values are going to multiply. For example, uh, religious people have more children than the non-religious. People who are very fervent in their religious beliefs, which is called religiosity, they tend to, to multiply like bunnies. They tend to have a lot of children. Whereas the people who are more secular, who are, who are more reserved in whatever religion they believe in, have fewer children. So, uh, and, and people from rural environments, people who live in the country, have more children than people live in the, who live in the city. Uh, so you have these values, whatever, whatever these, va these, these families are giving their children, uh, certain families are producing more of these children. And uh, these values are going to affect our society. For example, parents who are, say, scientists, they're going to in, in, infuse in their children the notion of rationally solving problems and, and, and looking at evidence and, look, and, and obeying the rules of logic. Whereas parents who come from very impulsive, very, um, uh, very emotional families who just have all these blow-ups and all these fights all the time, those values are going to be perpetuated through society. So I'm only beginning to grapple with this concept uh, myself, but, but you have to see that, that this, this is having some sort of effect within a society, within the United States or within Canada. Who are the people who are reproducing and what are they teaching their children? And uh, this can have an effect, for example, on elections. Uh, if you're 50-50, you have a 50-50 split between uh, liberals and conservatives and the conservatives have more children, well, isn't that going to change the proportions in society? And maybe just a little change is enough to push it over in, into one direction or another. So I choose to call this phenomenon dilution rather than reverse evolution. It's simply that the values of one group in society are being diluted by the values of the people who are reproducing more. And the real values that I am concerned about are the values of problem solving. Uh, for example, those scientists who teach their children to, to look at evidence and logic, those are more of the kind of people I want to have in my society than the people who just react to whatever news is on the TV and react with emotion because emotion just gets you into deep trouble. For example, in our, our depopulation issue, that this is a big long-term uh, long-term problem that people in, within a society are not having enough babies. And uh, you have to kind of take the long view. If you're going to address this problem at all, you have to take the long view. You have to look at how things are going to evolve over 50 or 100 years. Uh, whereas people who are very impulsive, who have the value of impulsivity, well, they're just look, going to look at what's in front of them. They're, they're going to look at the fact that a, an immigrant is doing better than they are. And they're, they, they want to, they want to shut, shut down the, all the immigrant stream into the, the, your country because of that. That's going to be detrimental to addressing the depopulation problem. So dilution is this complicating factor. I haven't really defined it. I, do, I don't really know how much of a factor it is. I don't know how much the Flynn effect is, is counteracting that factor.
but it's something you have to consider. Who within your society is reproducing and what values are they passing on to their children? So back in the good old days, in the days before birth control, things were a lot different. It's, it's hard to grasp just how much society has been changed by birth control. It, it's like the single greatest demographic change in the history of mankind. Uh, because before birth control, everyone had babies. Rich or poor, smart or stupid, you had babies. As long as you succumbed to the snare of romance, marriage is going to follow and marriage brings babies. So everyone had babies. Uh, even all the pronounced, all the well-known scientists of the past uh, had had children. Einstein had three children, and and Thomas Edison had six children, and and Charles Darwin himself had ten children. Everybody had children. And if you go back even further than that, back to the days before modern medicine and and sanitation, before that point. The advantage in reproduction went to the rich. If uh, you're the sultan or the chief of the village, then you would have multiple wives and, and produce maybe dozens of children. Whereas if you were just a serf, you, would, uh, most, you wouldn't produce many children and most of them wouldn't survive. So like it or not, we are a product of the elites in human history because the elites were more likely to survive. Uh, and, and that elite advantage changed with the advent of modern medicine and sanitation. Once, once we invented these med medications to save people's lives, then everybody got to live. And, and that was the beginning, back at the beginning of the, the 20th century, when the population explosion took off. Because you bring medicine into Africa and you save people's lives in Africa, well, Africa is going to explode. So at that point, the rich, the well-connected members of society, lost their survival advantage. And now everybody is producing willy-nilly. Uh, birth control comes along and the people who take advantage of the birth control are the most best equipped, the, the smartest, the best equipped, the most accomplished members of society. Uh, a company at the same time as birth control, we had women's liberation. Now we associate women's liberation with the 60s, about the same time as birth control came along. And that, that's no coincidence because women now could choose whether to have children. And that gave them the ability to choose also to pursue careers. And they started uh, competing with men in, in careers that were used to be reserved for men. And they did just as well as men. So they could become scientists now, they could become doctors. But what happens when you become a doctor? Well, you have to go through medical training. You have to go through a decade of training to become a doctor. And if a woman does that, that's a decade when she's not producing children. You can't go to medical school and have children. It's just incredibly difficult to do. So most don't. So just this pursuit of of education is keeping women from having babies. And that may, may account for the fact that educated women have fewer babies than uneducated women. Well, educated women just spend more time in school, when, and which, which pushes off the baby making to some other time. A woman only has about 30 years to produce children. And if 10 or 15 years are taken up by education, or pursuing of a career, then that's a smaller and smaller segment that that uh, childbearing can take, take place in. So th that's the obvious reason why more educated people have less children. Uh, and and you, you can't say that this is genetic. You can't say that someone is a doctor just because their genes are better. or It's just that they've had better opportunities. Uh, and if you take people without, the people who don't have opportunities are the ones who have children, then they're passing that lack of opportunity onto their children as well as their genes. So the smart people aren't just, aren't reproducing as fast as the 
less smart people are reproducing. Furthermore, the smart people are smart and they realize just what an insane undertaking that childbearing is. I mean, it is crazy when you, if you think too much about it, it's crazy. Here, here you're, taking, you're taking on this enormous cost of, of raising a child. When you have a baby, this huge cost that is emotional cost and, and financial cost that's just gonna hold everything down for 20 years, hold you down for 20 years. Plus, when you choose to, to, pro, to procreate, you're, you're spinning a big roulette wheel. And yeah, maybe you get an Einstein, but you might also get someone who's profoundly damaged, who, who, who has a birth defect, serious birth defect that keeps them being a, a, a member of society, a, a functioning members of society. Because you're the parent, you're the one who's responsible that, for that person with those, those severe defects. So maybe you're not just responsible for somebody for 20 years, maybe you're responsible for them for their entire life, even after you're gone, because you made the decision to have a baby. So that's what you get with, with genetic, with uh, our form of reproduction, that you don't know what you're gonna get. You have an Einstein, a, a brilliant man and a brilliant woman mating and having a baby, well, there's no guarantee that a child's gonna be brilliant. Einstein's children were no, no, were no Einsteins. You could, get a, you could get an Einstein yourself or you could get a profound problem that's gonna hold you down for years. So if you're smart enough, you're gonna say, whoa, do I really wanna do this? That's, that's the catch 22 of fertility. If you're smart enough to deserve a baby, then you're too smart to have one because you realize just what an insane undertaking it is. So with all this really irrefutable evidence that the most accomplished members of society are not having babies and the least accomplished are, then why don't we see it? Why don't we have any empirical evidence? Why do we have this Flynn effect where people keep getting better at standardized tests year after year. So what's with that? And I, I don't have a, a clear explanation, but I have my theories. People are way more stimulated today than they were back, say, in the 1920s. In 1920s, there was no stimulation. You could read books. You might travel 100 miles from your home and that's it. That's all these, the only stimulation you had was just your environment, your family, and a few books. If, if we, if we uh, fast forward ahead to today, you know, everybody's surrounded by stimulation. They, they've got their cell phones, they've got their, uh, their, their hundreds of TV channels. And from the very earliest moments of your birth, you're continually stimulated. So that creates a bigger brain. But that doesn't really mean you're smarter. To take an example, let's say you, raise, you have a monkey and you raise him in a, in a barren cage with no other monkeys and nothing but food and no way to entertain himself. And you take another mon monkey and you put him in a, raise him in a community of, of an active community of, of monkeys where he's got lots of people to interact with and he's got all sorts of toys to play with and uh, we have experimenters giving him challenges and, and you sacrifice both monkeys and you look at their brain, well, the monkey who had the most stimulation has a much more complex brain and, the, and he's smarter. He's smarter than the monkey who was raised with nothing. And that's the, essentially what the difference between 1920 and today is. Everybody is so stimulated and so surrounded by challenges that yes, they become smarter, but there's a limit to it. The monkey raised in the stimulating environment, he's still a monkey and he's still limited by what monkeys can do. You can't expect him to give a doctoral dissertation because he's just a monkey and his, there's a limit to, to, to what his, monkey brain is capable of. And it's just that like the, and it's the same way with people. You, people are, as a whole seem to be getting smarter and smarter, but everybody's gonna reach their limit at some point. 
at, at some point every you know this Flynn effect is going to end at some point where, where everyone has re reached maximum stimulation. But I, I've introduced this into my theory because you have to think about it. If you if you're thinking about how can we keep our species alive, you have to think about not only keeping up our numbers, making sure that there's enough people in France to support France, but you also have to think about the quality of the people we are producing. And I have no solution to how, how you would possibly decide to make smart people breed more. That's just, I have no idea how anyone would accomplish that in, in the current political environment. But you have to consider it. You have to realize that 100 years from now, it's not going to be the same population mix that we have now. Uh, there's going to be more redheads, more people of, of certain values. And, and it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good if all the wrong people are reproducing.